Welcome. We are here to talk to you today about our Journal of Supply Chain Management article, Configurational Approaches to Theory Development in Supply Chain Management, Leveraging Underexplored Opportunities. Uh, I'm Dave Ketchen, along with my co-authors, uh, Lutz Kaufman and Craig Carter. How are you guys doing today? Outstanding. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. So just to cast things in a broad sense, um, our belief is that research looks at three fundamental types of relationships. Uh, the first of those, which is the most common type, are linear relationships, where we're basically saying more of A leads to more of B, or more of A leads to less of B. Uh, one example there would be a, a pretty common belief that the more good data we have in hand, the more accurate we can forecast the future. At the other end of the spectrum there, we have uh, investigations of unique relationships where we're looking at idiosyncratic features of organizations somebody like, for example, Apple would be considered exceptional on so many different dimensions. So, you know, what is the unique features of Apple that make them so special? Uh, those two types of research are the most common. Uh, our focus in this paper is on configurational research, where we're looking at attributes shared by some observations, but not all observations. Uh, this sort of research can be traced at least to Burns and Stalker's book in uh, 1961, which was written before any of us were born. They basically divided the world into uh, mechanistic and organic organizations, organic organizations being more creative and innovative, mechanistic organizations being more uh, bureaucratic and efficient. But that's a much different mentality than looking at, say, A leading to B or the unique aspects of a company such as Apple. So this is a figure we adapted from uh, Carl Weick's uh, 1979 book. And it basically shows what is accomplished by these different approaches to research. So if we're looking at linear relationships, we can come up with conclusions that are generalizable to a large body of observations and that are fairly simple, but at the same time, they may not be accurate for any given observation. When we think about those unique relationships, uh, we find that we can describe them in a very uh, relatively simple manner, that they will accurately describe what's going on in, say, a company like Apple but uh, the generalizability is quite limited. So our third approach, the approach that we're most interested in with this paper, the configurational relationships, they're gonna stress uh, generalizing ideas to a fairly sizable body of observations in an accurate way, but what they sacrifice is simplicity. So configurational research tends to be fairly complex. And I think that's one of the things that discourages some folks from pursuing it. One of the things we hope to achieve with this paper is getting people more comfortable with doing configurational research so they won't be scared away by that complexity. So in terms of uh, established configurational approaches, uh, we can think about uh, typologies, which tend to be conceptually driven. A real popular one there would be the Miles and Snow typology from the late 1970s, consisting of uh, defenders, prospectors, analyzers, and reactors. There are also uh, taxonomies, which tend to be empirically generated, uh, often through uh, cluster analysis, which is a technique that's been around for quite some time. And as you can see on the slide, uh, taxonomies have played a pretty substantial role in the uh, supply chain management literature. And certainly we're not uh, suggesting that that sort of work should end. 
But what we are doing is highlighting a configurational approach called QCA that hasn't been exploited much in this particular field and that we think can add a lot of value. So Lutz, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Yeah, thank you, Dave. Um, so in, in order to get all of us into that thinking in terms of recipes, let me take you um, into for a moment into a bakery. Uh, we have these ingredients here, uh, flour, sugar, and so on. And our job is to create something tasty, something people will buy. Our outcome variable, if you want, is tastiness. So let's pause for a second and think about tasty bakery products, which we could make out of these ingredients here. Now I'm sure whatever came to mind, one thing to note is that not all products use the same ingredients. Each one will probably be made from a specific combination of ingredients. Some come with chocolate and some without. In other words, it's a question of creating smart combinations. And what we see here is something that is high in flour, sugar, butter, chocolate, and coconut is probably, and but with no cheese, is probably a good, um, a nice uh, chocolate croissant. Whereas something high in flour, butter, modest sugar, and, um, and cheese, but with no chocolate or coconut, might be a cheese croissant. And something that is low on flour, sugar, high chocolate, and cheese is probably not overly tasty. Now, tastiness is sort of our outcome variable, akin to the dependent variable in linear studies, and the ingredients are the causal conditions, akin to the IVs. And con configurations are constellations of factors. And what we see here is basically that um, we have three core pillars of, of uh, QCA and, and they together um, reflect causal complexity. One is conjunction, one is equifinality, and the last one is asymmetry. So conjunction is basically the end in terms of the causal conditions. We need flour and sugar and chocolate and so on. Equifinality is the or regarding configurations. So it's either a chocolate croissant or a ham and cheese croissant or, a, um, uh, or another type of croissant. Asymmetry, the third pillar here of causal complexity is that not the opposite of what is good leads to bad, basically. Um, and, and these, are, these are the core pillars of, of the approach uh, that, that we then do uh, take a look at when, when, we, um, when we investigate other situations with a, with a, a configurational approach. So on the, on the next uh, slide here, we see basically how this would be treated if we were to look at a linear approach. A linear approach would try to identify relationships between an individual ingredient, the independent variable, and tastiness, the dependent variable, holding all other ingredients constant, with some interdependencies potentially being, being modeled as interaction terms. So we would say, um, based on those results, that flour and sugar are significantly positively correlated to tastiness. Put simply, I think this would be pretty bad advice to, to a baker to say more sugar is always better, right? So good advice would instead be come up with some clever combinations that people like, right? And, but, and we've put that on the, on the next slide that um, we are, we are not dogmatic in a sense. Uh, what, what we recommend with our, um, with our article is that we complement this thinking that we are all very much used to, namely the correlational thinking with that 
configurational mindset and and that the configurational mindset is present in our daily life we saw that with the, with that bakery example hopefully now um and I'm turning it uh, over back to Dave uh, to explain that with um, a business example and leaving you out now from the bakery. I'm hungry listening to you talk. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I think the bakery example is a great one because it helps illustrate in terms that everybody can understand why uh, configurational thinking can be useful. Uh, but we also wanted to do a little bit more of a deep dive on an important uh, research stream within supply chain management. And in particular, we took a look at a model uh, developed by uh, Wowak et al. in the Journal of Business Logistics. And uh, that was a qualitative paper where uh, five key concepts were elicited through a series of interviews with people involved in product recalls. And so what we do in the article is conduct uh, what's called a thought experiment. That's uh, a tradition that dates back at least to Albert Einstein. And we're certainly not suggesting that intellectually we're in a class with him. Maybe the three of us combined might be, but, but individually certainly not. Um, and what we do here is map out, you know, what sort of scenarios might we see in terms of fast versus slow recalls? Uh, obviously, when there's a product defect, uh, we would like to see that product recalled uh, very quickly. But as we know from watching industry, that doesn't always happen. And so our speculation, for example, in that first column is that maybe a recall that has a heavy emphasis on traceability and the ability to extract products from the marketplace, maybe that would be a very fast recall. Uh, on the other side of the chart there, you see a couple of scenarios where uh, the recalls might be slow. But again, we're not uh, discussing any sort of one-to-one -one correspondence. It's more of an alignment or a profile of characteristics that might lead to a fast recall or a slow recall. So one of the ways that we wanted to end our presentation was to talk about how we could apply configurational theorizing as well as QCA to future research. And one way to do that is to think about some of the categories of past research, existing research. There are several that we list in our paper and we go into depth with each of those, for example, with relationships and relationship management. We mentioned research by Morris and Carter, 2004, where we looked at some of Morgan and Hunt's constructs of relationships. And um, in that paper with Morris and Carter, they looked at five of those, acquiescence, propensity to leave the relationship, functional conflict, uncertainty, cooperation, and using a traditional linear approach, structural equation modeling, they investigated how those might affect supplier logistics performance. What they found was that two of the constructs were significantly related to supplier logistics performance, uncertainty negatively related and cooperation positively related. And the other three were unrelated. Um, if we think about revisiting, for example, that study and applying a configurational approach what we might find is that in conditions of uncertainty, and we're certainly experiencing those now with the pandemic and buyer supplier relationships and logistics, there are going to be scenarios where there's high uncertainty. There could very well be configurations where we have high uncertainty, but maybe high functional conflict and low propensity to leave the relationship that could facilitate supplier logistics dependency. So we take a, a bit of a deep dive into each of those areas in our paper. But what I'd like to do, if we could go to the next slide, Dave, is to talk about one of the things that I'm most familiar with, which is sustainable supply chain management, and talk a little bit about that. And in the paper, we also discuss several of these, of these possible future research examples, one of which is a paper that actually the three of us wrote. It was Dave Lutz and myself. It was published in 2020, and we looked at 
the unintended consequences of sustainable supply chain management. It's a conceptual theory building piece, and we identified four potential phenomena that might lead to unintended consequences. Multiple performance metrics, um, think about safety, living wages, carbon emissions. So that's one, stakeholders, there are multiple stakeholders, there are individual managers in functions, functions in firms, firms themselves, supply chains, or in other words, multiple firms. So that's a second, short versus long-term time horizons and social construction and meaning. And when we think about that conceptualization, when we can think about applying a configurational approach, for example, if we look at safety within a plant, that might be facilitated by having fewer uh, and more internal stakeholders taking a shorter term time horizon. And that's probably less subject to social construction. It's more tangible versus something like carbon emissions where maybe more stakeholders need to be involved. A longer term time horizon needs to be considered and it's certainly more subject to social construction. We also look at the work of Carter and Jennings where one of the findings from that piece was that having a people-oriented organizational culture is positively related to purchasing social responsibility. That people-oriented organizational culture is one of actually six dimensions of organizational culture identified by Chapman and Jen in an earlier study. The other five dimensions being stability, outcome orientation, easygoingness, detail orientation, and team orientation. So here a possibility would be to revisit all six of those dimensions of organizational culture and see if there are configurations that might lend themselves to purchasing social responsibility. Uh, for example, maybe a people-oriented culture is not necessary if you have an outcome orientation along the detail orientation. That's just one example. And then finally, the work of Gadiger and Carter and uh, Vickman et al. 2016 which looked at intra-organizational influence theory and the various tactics that can be used to try to gain commitment of internal stakeholders to sustainable supply chain management initiatives. And both of those papers took a linear approach to investigating which influence tactics might be most successful. The reality is that this would be very ripe to revisit using configurations and a configurational approach so certainly there's a value in looking at, at this in a linear fashion, but it's possible that some configurations might work well and with asymmetry, um, that some configurations may, may not work well. So that's an area that I think would be very ripe to revisit. Well, if you've hung with us the entire video, we certainly appreciate your time. And we hope that you've become convinced that configurational work is a viable alternative to uh, the more popular approaches. And we look forward to seeing configurational work written by you in print down the road. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you.